Although they aren't with us anymore, these chefs will forever be remembered for their remarkable runs on Hell's Kitchen. Yeah, today we're talking about contestants who sadly passed away, and the news of this contestant's death came as a shock. I was really torn up when I heard about how Tom passed away on July 1st of this year. Now, before I get into that, let's start by sending my thoughts and sympathy to all of Tom's family, friends, and loved ones. There's no denying that Tom truly made Season 2 memorable, not least of which how strong-willed he was during the Signature Dish Challenge, where he was the sixth in line for Ramsay to judge his dish. As Ramsay lifted the cloche that was covering it, you could tell that he was a bit nervous. Tom even admitted that he was sweating, and even got a little bit of self-deprecating humor in. I sweat. I sweat all the time. I'm a schmetzer. Don't worry about that. The dude really knew how to make light of any moment. He had prepared shrimp scampi with a little twist, and I'm sure nobody expected it to be a cooked Caesar salad. Obviously, Chef Ramsay was appalled by the concept. First time in my entire life I've been served a cooked Caesar salad. But this is the moment where Tom really impressed everyone. Despite Chef Ramsay's strong reaction, unlike the other contestants who were never receptive to criticism, Tom neither talked back nor got defensive. I'm a man, I can take it. If he didn't care, he wouldn't break my chop. He simply said that he could handle the criticism and he wasn't going to give Chef Ramsay a hard time about it. And that is exactly what Chef Ramsay expects from his chefs. With that statement right there, Tom showed the world that he had thick skin and was ready to learn from the experience. However, I didn't like the way he was treated in the third episode. During the relay challenge, Tom took the initiative to be the first on his team, and he was responsible for receiving information about the three dishes they needed to prepare, being chicken, tortellini, and salmon. Somehow, Tom found pre-made tortellini, but when Chef Ramsay noticed, he called him out and reminded him that there were ingredients available to make fresh ones. Tom not only acknowledged this, but also effectively communicated all the necessary information to Giacomo, ensuring that the team made some progress. At the end of the challenge, Tom felt really confident because his team had successfully completed two out of the three dishes. However, when Ramsay started giving critiques, things took a turn for the worse. Chef Ramsay, in a shocking and completely inappropriate move, resorted to fat shaming Tom. Do I slouch and slub and talk like this, like some big fat fucking slob? But I really didn't find that funny at all. And what's more, Tom's reaction was justified. He attempted to interject because he wanted to voice his thoughts, but Chef Ramsay's derogatory comment took it to a whole different level. But Tom wasn't willing to back down this time. Yeah, he decided to push back and defend himself, rightfully so. Who do you think you're talking to? He doesn't want to get in a street fight with me, trust me. Sometimes we end up forgetting that these are thinking, feeling human beings, not actors. By the way, yeah I know, they're also human too, but I figured I'd make the distinction here. And also, there's a shit ton of editing that goes into making someone appear the way they do on the show. Turns out, contestants are poked and prodded to give certain reactions in their confessionals. But Chef Ramsay is in a cult with Chef Ramsay being the all-knowing infallible leader or something. So maybe sometimes I can stop treating him like one and agree that there have been times where he's definitely crossed the line. I came across this post where Grub Street called Chef Ramsay off-putting. And this may still be the nicest thing they said about him. Listen to this. The kind of negative press the chef seems to actively seek, it gives him fuel to continue to build his empire of television shows, cookbooks, and overpriced restaurants. Grub Street doesn't begrudge Ramsay for being successful, but his success comes at the expense of manners and taste. Among the laundry list of allegations against him, the article also called him out for fat shaming Hell's Kitchen contestants. In my humble opinion, Chef Ramsay seems to have grown and mellowed out as he's grown older and become a dad. But yeah, there's no denying that in the past, he could be pretty tough on people when it came to their looks, height, and weight. Missy, Missy, come here you fat mouth little stupid bitch. Now, let's be honest, these criticisms have nothing to do with their actual skill in the kitchen. Coming back to Tom, his obituary reads, Thomas Henry Pauly, age 60, passed away on Saturday, July 1st, 2023, at his home in Lakewood. Born in Englewood, New Jersey, Thomas was raised in Harrington Park and has resided in Lakewood for the last two years. Also, did you know that Tom worked on Wall Street for many years before following his true passion for cooking? Yeah, turns out he attended the French Culinary Institute in New York in 2004 to 2006 before venturing out to different restaurants. What's more, apart from being a great chef, Tom was an avid golfer and a huge New York Yankees and New York Giants fan. Rest easy, man. Up next, when asked about his future plans, this next contestant said, I've never been one of those kinds who has an ultimate goal. I kind of just go with the flow. 
Some people have the desire to get to one point, my path chose me, so in that respect, you never know what's coming down the pike. I might find something else later on in life. Any knowledge is good knowledge, so I'll take it all. I mean, the man I was at 25 isn't the man I was at 30. You know what's coming, as far as I know now, I'm loving it. Well, these were the words of the late great season 16 contestant, Polly Giganti. On April 20th, 2017, Polly was found dead in his home in Philadelphia, as reported by Philly.com. He was only 36 years old. According to James Garrow, a spokesperson for the Philadelphia Department of Public Health, Polly's passing was the result of accidental drug intoxication. Sadly, the restaurant industry has become extraordinarily fertile ground for the abuse of illicit substances like alcohol, prescription opioids, cocaine, and marijuana. But the most pernicious of them all, according to the experts, is fentanyl. It's said that people who come from unstable family backgrounds, have experienced inconsistent parenting, or grew up in a less than functional home can still climb the ladder and earn a decent living. However, it's really common that they often carry their past experiences with them. Addiction is less about your external environment and more about what's happening inside your mind and body. And the restaurant industry can fuel these issues due to the ready availability of substances, demanding hours, culture of abuse, low wages, and high expectations. Polly grew up poor and only worked in restaurants to survive. And guess what? He never even wanted to become a chef. I never went to school for cooking. I was gonna be an engineer. I was basically doing it as a measuring stick on myself. I didn't care about any preconceived fears and notions. I just wanted to see how I could cook against other trained chefs. And boy, he was pretty impressive. Man, he not only taught himself the art of cooking, but managed to reach the impressive fourth place in the competition. That was just behind Heidi Parent, the runner-up Heather Williams, and the winner Kimberly Ann Ryan. His journey on the show kicked off with a remarkable start, and he made quite the impression on Chef Ramsay. During the signature dish challenge, Polly showcases culinary talent by presenting biscotti crusted scallops over crispy polenta with a basil curry cream sauce. It's a five, congratulations. I am ecstatic, thank the lord. His dish earned him the distinction of being the first male contestant to ever achieve a perfect score of five in the new format of this challenge, and that's no small feat. At the time of his passing, Polly was running the restaurant Bira in Philly and his journey on the show is a testament to the power of determination and self-learning. You will be missed, Polly. But what happened to this next contestant from season 12 who was dealing with cirrhosis, a liver condition, and also a chronic inflammatory bowel disease is a real shame. I'm of course talking about contestant Jessica Vogel, who suffered from some major health concerns and, to make things worse, also fell prey to substance abuse. Although she was believed to be in rehab, it came too little, too late. Her fiancé, John Kayser, shared the heartbreaking news of her passing on July 30th, 2018. The poor woman was only 34. Despite her ongoing treatment for colitis, her heart ultimately just stopped beating, as Kayser explained. Dan Ryan, a fellow contestant from season 11, said, I have no words. I'll miss her greatly. All HK contestants are family to us, alumni. After the news of her death broke out, more comments started pouring in from the Hell's Kitchen family. Rest in peace to a friend and sister through the birth of fire, tweeted season 12 contestant Gabriel. Though Jessica was being treated for colitis at the time of her death, the chef seemed to acknowledge that she had a drinking problem, as pointed out in a media.com post from October 2017. It has since been deleted though. She wrote, When my sister says start a blog, the narcissistic alcoholic in me thinks me and I. I'm fucked up. Truly, sure, I was on Hell's Kitchen with Jeff Ramsey and Cutthroat Kitchen on Food Network. I went to culinary school in Denver, grew up at the Jersey Shore, was raised by Mormon nannies in a mansion, dated a coastie, and had a stint of living near strippers in St. Pete, Florida. I'm weeks away from being 34 years old and got told I drink too much and have cirrhosis. Did it stop me from pouring shots of alcohol? No. Did my lifestyle of sex, drugs, and foie gras come to a born-again Christian revelation? Fuck that noise. I don't know if you want to have an adventure tale, but I'm here and ready to tell. My name is Jess, and I've lived to tell about it. To be continued. Those last three words are genuinely bone-chilling. It really shows you how fragile our lives are. Rest easy, Jessica. You were gone way too soon. Now, I want to take a quick break from this pretty heavy topic for a sec to make this known. If you or anyone you know is struggling with addiction or mental health issues, know that help is actually available. 
Visit the Substance Abuse and Mental Health Services Administration website or contact SAMHSA's National Helpline at 1-800-662-HELP. Feel free to share this video with a friend and tell them that you love them and appreciate them today. Speaking of seeking help, I think Gennaro Delilo had a tough run in Hell's Kitchen. It started with his duck breast dish during the signature dish challenge, which didn't impress Ramsey to say the very least. Gennaro, that completely ducked up this dish. Things didn't improve much for Gennaro as the competition continued though. During a service challenge, he and Matt Hearn made errors with the sea bass, one was overcooked and the other was undercooked. While Gennaro was considered for elimination by his team during their deliberation, he managed to avoid being nominated and stayed a bit longer. In the second episode of season 16, the men's team faced a rough service that led Chef Ramsay to kick them out of the kitchen and let the women take over. Bruce, get out! Get out! It was the second time in a row that the men had to be shown the door, and this time, Gennaro had his share of responsibility for sending up raw New York strip steaks not once, but twice. Look, it's raw, it's white. I'm, I'm talking to you. Yes, would you like another chef? What, what the f do you think? Ultimately, Gennaro found himself on the chopping block, nominated for elimination alongside Aaron Smock. Chef Ramsay selected Gennaro due to his struggles in the kitchen and a perceived lack of passion. Despite the challenges and setbacks, Gennaro held on to his belief in himself, stating, I have a lot of passion and fight in me, say that my teammates didn't see that. I know I'm a good cook. My fiance knows I'm a great chef. I'm a winner in my eyes. And I agree. Nobody else, certainly not a reality TV competition, should decide your worth but you. And certainly not Johnny. You're embarrassing me in front of one of my heroes. Well, I apologize for that. No, but for real, how overplayed was his reaction? So damn forced. And it came after Gennaro very rationally said, Like, I'm not happy with what happened. Yeah, I up, man, but I'm not gonna let you guys put me down about it. He admitted his mistakes, didn't he? So what was he supposed to do? Throw punches in the air or scream and shout like the rest of them? You have to agree, Gennaro handled every situation with so much grace and poise. Rest in peace, brother. Moving on, when season 12 contestant Sandra Flores opened up about her post-HK journey, nothing prepared us for the devastating tragedy that followed. Listen to this. She wrote, In 2014, I dominated the airwaves of season 12 on Hell's Kitchen with Chef Gordon Ramsay, right up until the finale. Upon my return home from wrapping up filming the show two months later, I wasn't feeling right. Was not myself. I was running about six miles a day and in the top condition of my life, but had severe fatigue. I felt as if all my energy was being sucked away to some unknown place and just wouldn't stop. Upon my insistence to doctors that something was wrong with me, my life came to a screeching halt. I got diagnosed with stage 3 breast cancer. I felt like my life was over and I could die. She continued, two months later, I had a double mastectomy. The 9cm tumor that plagued me and 30 of my lymph nodes was removed. I've suffered chemotherapy from hell. My good doctors at Memorial Sloan Kettering have brought me to the edge of death trying to kill my cancer with treatment to the point where I lack the strength to walk. I've endured 25 rounds of radiation and lost another one of my trademarks besides my double Ds. I also lost my pride and joy, my long golden hair, but not my will to live. Luckily, I got to donate it where two wigs could be made for little girls who have lost all their hair to cancer treatment. She concluded by saying, I still dream of having my own show and opening up restaurants all over every major city where I can create art with my love for food and abuse my staff as I see fit. This is my story and I will continue to be the author of it. Pretty inspiring stuff, huh? But sadly, this is where the story doesn't end well. On January 22nd, 2022, she passed away. Man, that's really tough to say, but you'll always be remembered, Sandra. But this next contestant did something shocking. Season 2's contestant Rachel Brown reportedly took her own life after appearing on Hell's Kitchen. She was only 41. Her death made headlines and brought about the question of whether or not the reality show and Chef Ramsay's treatment of the contestants were to blame. The accusations were getting really heated because she wasn't the only Gordon Ramsay reality show contestant to come to the same end. Remember the restaurant which was featured on Kitchen Nightmares Campania's owner, Joseph Cerniglia? Your business is about to swim down the Hudson. If you're out of the loop, you need to watch this video I made about it. Anyway, writer and editor Cynthia Dermondi wrote in her blog, To me, this is a story about people who are so desperately searching for a handle on their lives, so they throw all of their hopes into a television show to fix it. If this isn't a part of what's so wrong about today's culture, I don't know what is. Gordon Ramsay had no comment on these deaths, but why would he? 
There's simply a sad coincidence that points to Chubbles way beyond the scope of any harsh words he could launch at them and nothing more. Damn, that's really harsh. But I guess she does have a point. What are your thoughts? The former president of the American Academy of Suicidology, Dr. Robert Ufit, shares some insight saying that she might have had a very bevy problem before appearing on the show. But this next contestant left an indelible mark on our hearts. Aaron Song, the Asian cowboy from season three. He was one of the kindest contestants we, as Hell's Kitchen fans, had the pleasure of watching. But unfortunately, being nice doesn't always cut it in the high pressure world of Hell's Kitchen. Aaron struggled to keep up with the demands of the competition, and the stress eventually started to take its toll on him. To be feeling all of his 48 years. Oh, I'd like to see. A he got emotional almost every time he was under pressure, and it was heartbreaking to see him break down. What a quick is it, hey. What a quick is it, the guys have been Breathe. Breathe. With every day that passed, Aaron was starting to lose himself. Off your face before we serve chicken and snot. Yes, sir. Things started to become evident in the very first dinner service when he was desperate to do his best, but his health started to slow him down. Things got so rough that he even considered quitting halfway through the competition. I'll quit. You mean quits as in tonight or quits as in? No, quits as in. As in for good? Yeah. But his teammates rallied around him and encouraged him to keep going. Yes, you are. Are you leaving us high and dry? I'm not leaving you high and dry. Exactly. He's staying. I like that. I like that. You staying. While most team members are hellbent on sabotaging each other, this is one of those few times when the entire team was actually there to support and uplift another team member. This hug is really making me uncomfortable now. But unfortunately, it wasn't enough. In a shocking turn of events, Aaron collapsed in the third episode. Are you ready? Let's go! Let's go. Oh, oh, oh. Feel better, sweetie pie. He was immediately rushed to the hospital. <laughs> Thankfully, Aaron was able to recover. However, Chef Ramsay quite hesitantly had to deliver the devastating news. I want to get you out of the heat and raise your confidence. You will not be disappointed in me. You'll be fine. Yeah? Good man. Despite his tragic exit from Hell's Kitchen, Aaron went on to become a celebrated chef, but sadly, his fame was short-lived. Just three years after his appearance on the show, he passed away in Rancho Palos Verdes, California due to complications from diabetes. But man, I was really shaken up when I heard about Tom's passing on the 1st of July last year. In short, Tom was an absolute legend on season 2 of Hell's Kitchen. I mean, who could forget his iconic signature dish challenge? He was 6th in line to present his dish to Chef Ramsay, and you could tell he was nervous. I mean, come on. The guy admitted he was sweating bullets going into the thing. Or, well, joked about it, but that was Tom's style. He could find humor in any situation. I sweat all the time. I'm a schmetzer. Don't worry about that. Tom's confidence and good humor made him a joy to watch. Anyway, when it was time for the big reveal, he presented a cooked Caesar salad, which uh, is about as weird as it sounds. I mean, you've got to admire his creativity, even if Chef Ramsay was less than impressed. In my entire life, I've been served a cooked Caesar salad. I understand that, Chef. Sound you know, Tom really won me over with his attitude after Chef Ramsay slammed his dish. While others might have gotten defensive or argumentative, Tom took it like a pro. He simply acknowledged that he could handle the criticism and didn't make a fuss over it. Take it, it's no big deal. And you know what? If he didn't care, he wouldn't break my chops. His actions showed a lot of maturity and a willingness to learn. That's exactly what Chef Ramsay wants to see in his chefs. Someone who can take constructive criticism and use it to improve. And my man Tom proved that he had a thick skin and was there to learn. But, you know, I wasn't a fan of how he was treated in episode 3. I mean, Tom took the initiative in the relay challenge, volunteering to be the first on his team and taking charge of getting the info on the dishes they needed to make. But when he brought up pre-made tortellini, Chef Ramsay called him out on it. But Tom wasn't flustered. He owned up to it and made sure to pass on the necessary info to Giacomo so they could keep moving forward. Well, I thought he showed some great leadership skills there, and well, it was kind of unfair to criticize him so harshly. You know, Tom was feeling pretty good about his team's performance in the challenge, but then Chef Ramsay started critiquing him a little more personally than he rightfully should have. Do I slouch and slub and talk like this, like some big fat? Yeah, that comment about Tom's weight was totally uncalled for. I mean, we can totally do without the fat shaming, right? I didn't find it funny at all. If anything, it was hurtful and unnecessary. What made it worse is that although Tom tried to speak up, Chef Ramsay shut him down with another derogatory comment. But Tom stood his ground this time. He refused to back down and defended himself. Who do you think you're talking to? He doesn't want to get in a street fight with me, trust me. Good for him. We need to remember that these contestants are real people with feelings, not just actors. 
And let's not forget the heavy editing that goes into creating a certain narrative on the show. Contestants are often prompted to give specific reactions in their confessionals, so what we see on screen isn't always the full story. Hell's Kitchen isn't a cult, and Chef Ramsay isn't infallible. He's crossed the line before, and it's time we acknowledge it. I mean, contestants deserve respect. They don't deserve to be punching bags for Chef Ramsay. On that topic, I stumbled upon an article from Grub Street that called out Chef Ramsay for his off-putting behavior. And let me tell you, that's probably the nicest thing they said about him. It's like, come on, can't we just judge the food without throwing in some unnecessary personal jabs? I think Chef Ramsay has mellowed out a bit with age and becoming a dad, but there's no denying he's been tough on people in the past. H. Yes, Chef. Gone are the days where his criticism targeted their appearance, height, and weight, rather than just focusing on their cooking skills. And thank God for that. Either way, coming back to Tom. His obituary is a beautiful tribute to his life. It talks about how he spent years working on Wall Street before eventually following his passion for cooking. Apparently, he even attended the French Culinary Institute in New York between 2004 to 2006 and went on to work in various restaurants. Well, I can only hope he lived a fulfilling life. Rest in peace, Tom. You are missed. Next up is the man with the golden heart, Louis Petrozza. Petrozza left a lasting impression on the show when he made his debut in season 4. He demonstrated exceptional leadership skills, was an outstanding team player, and had a genuine passion for cooking. His maturity and ability to motivate his teammates were evident throughout the season. Although he didn't have a stellar start, with a signature dish that failed to impress, he quickly redeemed himself in the dinner service. That lamb is beautifully cooked. Thank you, chef. Don't piss your pants. It, it's been 20 years since I've cooked a line. It was very nice of Chef Ramsay to compliment on that. Um, you know, that was nice. However, Petrozza wasn't immune to mistakes, and Chef Ramsay even called him out on several occasions. Black, the black. It is a fucking Ballerona chocolate fondant. Cut the fucking thing, man! Right Oh, come on! Fucking hell! Despite these setbacks, he consistently bounced back. And the sad, the uh, uh, pave of salmon. Now, get in the fucking kitchen. You're on the meat. Work my fucking ball. What really set Petrozza apart was his ability to own up to his mistakes and learn from them. I can't pick any of these guys. They work too hard and we came in. He was humble enough to acknowledge his weaknesses and even went so far as to call himself the weakest link among his peers. Petrozza was a mess. Crap on top of crap on top of crap on top Petrozza captured everyone's hearts with his genuine attitude, honest behavior, and exceptional cooking skills. But, well, everyone has their flaws, and Petrozza's was to be messy and disorganized at the best of times. What was the request? What was the request? What did I ask for? You asked for medium. You know it's undercooked, you still serve top and bottom it, yes? But it was his kind and humble nature that made him a standout competitor. Top, you know, I tried to get the job done. I just, I wasn't a star in that spot today. Your level. Despite his flaws, Petrosa's talent and dedication earned him a spot in the finals. Although he didn't take home the top prize, he won the hearts of everyone who was on that season and plenty of people at home too. You're the most gracious man on that team. Chef. Okay, the one person. After his time on the show, Petrosa continued to excel in the culinary world, becoming an executive chef and inspiring many with his passion and expertise. Tragically, this talented chef left us too soon, passing away on November 15, 2019 due to complications from lung cancer. However, his legacy lives on, and he will always be remembered as one of the most lovable and talented contestants to ever grace the Hell's Kitchen kitchen. Moving on to Jessica Vogel, a contestant on season 12 who showed great promise with her passion for cooking. And that passion resulted in some incredible results, which eventually earned her praise from Chef Ramsay himself. Jessica started strong despite a few minor mistakes in the early dinner services. Garnishes. The beef is cooked, now we still have garnish. Although it looked like she had lost her footing, she soldiered on. There is a mesh. I got plenty of mesh. While Chef Ramsay takes a moment to reflect. However, things took a turn for the worse, starting from the eighth dinner service, when her mistakes became more noticeable and she was nominated for elimination for the first time. No, I did it. I did it early. I thought it was coming. She just yelled it was coming. You're not really a chef, are you? You're just a showgirl with a big feather coming out your eye. Although she managed to survive the chopping block, her performance continued to falter and she found herself struggling to keep up with the demands of the competition. In a tense moment during deliberations, Jessica tried to defend herself and plead her case to stay in the game. John Dory! There's one, so you need one more. I want them together! She was at a crossroads. She knew she needed to step up her game, but her nerves got the better of her, leading to careless mistakes. 
The Cook for Your Life challenge was her chance to prove herself, but unfortunately, her dishes fell flat. And then the unthinkable happened. This is Jeff, I'm sorry, Jeff. It was a mistake that would haunt her, and her other errors compounded on top of that to seal her fate. Hell's Kitchen. Tonight was a fucking embarrassment. Despite her inconsistent performance, Chef Ramsay acknowledged her potential. Highs and lows across your three dishes. But to get those three dishes out there. But it wasn't enough to save her from elimination. Jessica, your time is done, my darling. The lobster was way undercooked. Okay. And the After her time on Hell's Kitchen, Vogel went on to achieve great things. She became an executive chef at Black Rebel Burger, shared her recipes on her blog, and even competed in the cutthroat competition. Her passion for cooking and determination to succeed were evident, even in the face of adversity. Sadly, Jessica's life was cut short when she passed away on July 30th, 2018, due to complications from colitis, a chronic inflammatory bowel disease. Her memory lives on, and her story serves as a reminder to never give up on our passions, even when the road ahead seems uncertain. But this next story about Sandra Flores' is one that will leave you heartbroken and inspired at the same time. Sandra was a force to be reckoned with on season 12, making it all the way to episode 12. In Hell's Kitchen. I know I screwed up service tonight, but I thrive on challenges. After filming wrapped up, she returned home feeling off, despite being in top physical condition from running six miles a day. She persisted in seeking medical help, and her insistence ultimately led to a devastating diagnosis. Stage 3 breast cancer. She quickly underwent a double mastectomy, chemotherapy, and radiation. She lost her hair, her strength, and her pride, but not her will to live. Despite everything, she remained determined to pursue her dreams of having her own show and restaurants. Her resilience and courage, a testament to her strength. Sadly, she passed away on January 22nd, 2022, but her story will continue to inspire the world. Rest in peace, Sandra. Your legacy lives on. Moving on to Keith Green, a contestant on season 2 of Hell's Kitchen, who showed tremendous promise with his impressive cooking skills and consistent improvement throughout the competition. However, his attitude was a major turnoff. If there's money involved, I'm gonna make sure that I do everything in my power for you to win. He came across as unsympathetic, rude, and downright annoying. Just watch him strut around like he owns the place. Yes. How long for that oyster special? Two minutes, chef. There were moments when his talent shone through, like when he led the blue team to a successful service with his excellent communication and leadership skills. But unfortunately, his rotten attitude often overshadowed his accomplishments. Even Chef Ramsay had to warn him about his behavior. Brat syndrome, that huffy puffy, turn their eyes, hold their arms, and not even look at me in the eyes. Well, yeah, he had his moments of glory, like in the sixth dinner service, where he excelled and received praise from Chef Ramsay himself. Results are lovely. Keith. Yes, Chef. Good man. Let's go. He also shone in the first Black Jacket dinner service, earning more accolades from the chef. However, his true colors returned in the last dinner service, where his overconfidence, rudeness, and sour attitude resurfaced. When Keith was finally eliminated for his poor performance and lack of leadership, he didn't take it graciously. I think that you have a hard on for Virginia. Instead, he argued with Chef Ramsay, who promptly shut him down. Why'd you have to be so fucking rude? Cut to me all the time. So? After his time on Hell's Kitchen, Keith went on to work with Heather West and eventually became an executive chef. Tragically, his life was cut short on August 15th, 2012, when he was found dead after a morning swim, leaving behind a wife and child. Despite his controversial behavior on the show, Keith's passion for cooking and his achievements in the culinary world are worth remembering. So, did you hear about Rachel Brown from season two? It's just devastating to think about. She was only 41 years old when she passed away. The news of her death is heartbreaking and it raises some really tough questions about the reality TV industry and the pressure that comes with it. I mean, Chef Ramsay is known for being tough on his contestants, but could that toughness have contributed to her tragic end? Chef Ramsay hasn't commented on these tragic events, but it's clear that there are deeper issues at play here. Though I don't want to go into too much more detail out of respect. This case is a little less clear-cut than the others, so I'll leave the speculation to everybody else this time around. Moving on, you do remember Jonathan Plumley from Season 9, right? The dude was pretty funny, I'll give him that. But let's be real, Hell's Kitchen isn't a comedy club. And Jonathan got off to a super rocky start with Chef Ramsay in no small part because of it. The dude was pretty funny, I'll give him that. But let's be real, Hell's Kitchen isn't a comedy club. And Jonathan got off to a super rocky start with Chef Ramsay in no small part because of it. Oh, and it gets worse. The pineapple looks like... Can? Yes. 
He ended up using canned pineapple, which is basically a sin in Chef Ramsay's book. I mean, come on, you know the guy's a total perfectionist. And then he tried to blame it on something else. Limited time. 45 minutes. Limited time. All right, all right, now that's an excuse that could never fly, not in Chef Ramsay's kitchen. But the worst part, his dish was a total mess. But the surprise, in fact, was you opened it out of a can. That's what pissed me off more than anything. It was so messy that Chef Ramsay didn't even bother tasting it. Yikes, what a way to start off the competition. And during the whole time on the show, he didn't make any improvements at all. If you ask me, I think Jonathan was cruising along for a while, avoiding nominations until episode 6. But then, Chef Ramsay finally had enough of his subpar cooking and called him out. I'm seriously disappointed. Now, this is when Jonathan promised to step up his game. I'm gonna be wrong, I'd rather talk to my team and get it right the first time, you know. But instead of getting better, he kept bombing and bombing and bombing. He went from bad to worse, and his mistakes started to snowball. I swear to God, it's like food from a kindergarten. I've tasted better can spaghetti. And then, the final nail in his coffin was the eighth service. I had a young man in here two years ago that broke his arm. Went on to win the competition. Yes, sir. If you've given up, get out! Not only did he mess up the dishes, but he also failed to communicate with his team, causing chaos in the kitchen. It was like he just gave up. Come here, I want to work with you. The pain's starting to get to. That's when Chef Ramsay decided to pull the plug. My big boy. <laughs> Real honest, Chef Ramsay. I appreciate it. All. Thank you. Jonathan's time on Hell's Kitchen ended in a blaze of glory. And by glory, I mean a total mess. He got the boot for his careless mistakes, subpar cooking, and for trying to sweep it all under the rug on top of that. But hey, he didn't let that define him. After the show, he went on to become a culinary consultant. Yeah, looks like he finally managed to pull it off. However, things took a dark turn when he got arrested in 2018 for disorderly conduct and resisting arrest. And tragically, on February 9th, 2022, Jonathan's life came to an end. The cause of his death remains a mystery, and it's a shame because he had so much potential. And finally, we have Pauly Giganti from season 16, who made it all the way up to the top four. At first, he was one of those guys who was all over the place when it came to his cooking. I mean, the dude would crush it during challenges, but then totally fall apart during services. It was like he had two different personalities in the kitchen. But I gotta give him credit, his signature dish in the first challenge was on point. He got a perfect score of 5. And I was like, wow, this guy's got skills. His impressive signature dish was just a tease, unfortunately. He needed to bring that same heat during the dinner service, but he just couldn't make it happen. And it wasn't an isolated incident, considering he ended up getting nominated for elimination multiple times. But somehow, he managed to squeak by and survive every single one of them. I was like, how is this guy still here? But I guess that's just the unpredictability of Hell's Kitchen at work. However, he had a major flaw. He just couldn't own up to his mistakes. He'd always try to shift the blame or make excuses, which really got under Chef Ramsay's skin. In fact, Chef Ramsay even called him out on it during one of the deliberations, warning him to shape up. Despite all the close calls, Giganti managed to make it to the Black Jacket Challenge, which was a huge accomplishment. But his worst performance came during the second Black Jacket dinner service, and that's what ultimately sent him packing. You can't escape the chopping block forever, and his refusal to learn from his mistakes finally caught up with him. There were many moments where Chef Ramsay praised him for bouncing back, but unfortunately, it was not enough to keep him in competition. Tragically, Pauly Giganti's life came to a shocking end on April 20th, 2017, when he was just 36 years old. According to reports, he was found dead in his Philadelphia home, and the cause was apparently accidental drug intoxication. It's a heartbreaking reminder of the struggles many in the restaurant industry face. Experts say that people from tough backgrounds like Polly may achieve success, but often struggle with inner demons. 
Addiction isn't just about the environment, but about what's going on inside. And the restaurant industry can enable these issues with easy access to substances, grueling hours, and a culture of abuse. Polly's story is a devastating reminder that the restaurant industry hasn't really changed for the better. Polly grew up in poverty and worked in restaurants just to make ends meet. And the crazy thing is, he never even dreamed of becoming a chef. He was just a natural talent. He taught himself how to cook and ended up making it to the top four on Hell's Kitchen, competing against talented chefs like Heidi, Heather, and Ryan. His determination and self-taught skills are a true inspiration. At the time of his passing, he was running his own restaurant, Bira, in Philadelphia, and Polly's journey is a testament to the power of hard work and determination. So, which of these contestants live on in your hearts, even after all these years? Let me know in the comments below. And if you enjoyed this video, make sure to drop a like, subscribe, and turn on my post notifications. And before you check out, make sure to check my next video out right here. It's even crazier.